you ready to learn? Because my super experienced guests are ready to share some really valuable information. Make sure and listen all the way to the end to get help and support. So let's start with the best audio experience. What's up, guys? Today we are talking about content uh, rate optimization, how you can increase sales by optimizing for this parameter. I'm excited to discuss this topic with Will Lowerson. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, it's a big pleasure to check out your profile. You have extended experience about this topic. Uh, so before we start, just tell more about yourself, your experience, background, and why you decided to take this topic. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm Will Lawrenson. Uh, I'm, I'm from the UK in London. Um, my, my background has been startups mainly, um, marketing for, for kind of 10 years uh, in startups. And I always kind of came across the same problems. You know, we were the marketing team was given a big budget and told, go, go spend the money, acquire customers. And that was it. You know, that was our mm -hmm. role. And there was never any link up between what marketing did and what the product and developers were doing. So they always had their roadmaps and they said, we want to release this feature, that feature. And on the marketing side, we'd be saying, well, you know, we're getting good click through rates on our ads, good engagement with our ads, but they're not converting. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and we need your help to convert because, you know, we, we don't have access to the website. So uh, the first company I was at, you know, that happened a bit and I started to work more closely with them. And, and that ended up being more of a, a, a CRM role actually, where I basically took control of, of the email marketing and everything to help. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the next role I was in, I kind of said, look, this isn't going to work, right? If you, you're going to give us a big budget, a vast majority of that money is going to get wasted because people aren't converting. People aren't, you know, they can't use the product. It's not, it's not very good, essentially. Um, so I started to work much more closely with with the product guys to to make sure that we were taking into account feedback. We were looking at what different regions wanted, and and really improving the product. And that's how I've kind of got to where I am today. You know, I, I mm -hmm. had that problem myself a couple of times. I know loads of other businesses have it. So now I specialize in conversion rate optimization to, to help e-commerce brands uh, deal with some of these issues uh, and make sure they are spending money efficiently. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Love your experience. Uh, okay. I want to start from the first question about um, how websites uh, can find that something is wrong with their convert, uh, convert rate optimization. For example, I check out a few studies uh, from big companies, big websites, and when they fixed uh, a few uh, words, uh, quotes, you know, uh, or uh, buttons, they could increase their sales plus 20, 30 percent. Uh, for some companies, uh, it's more than a million dollars, you know. Can you tell how to find that something is wrong? Uh, do we need to test, to analyze? Uh, for example, uh, some pages can convert, but uh, how do I know that I can increase conversion rate with these pages? So, I mean, in the majority of cases, there's always going to be opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, conversion rate optimization is an ongoing process. Uh, there's, you can always iterate on on the tests that you're running, um, and on and the winnings and even losing uh, or kind of failing tests uh, that you have. So th there's always opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. What I would do is uh, I would start by looking in Google Analytics and trying to figure out where there are some problems on the website. So e-commerce website, for example, you might look at the enhanced e-commerce uh, reports and see that one of those reports, one of those graphs is really low. So it could be the number of people who view a product. It could be your add to cart rate. It could be your start checkout, it could be end checkout. You identify one of those where you think the biggest opportunity is. For a lot of companies, uh, a lot of the time I see it as the add to cart as the issue, right? Mm -hmm. um, especially when you, now you've got Shopify, right? Given the number of brands on Shopify, that that checkout is very very similar for everyone um unless you're on shopify plus and, and can make some edits um shop the, the checkout's basically the same so those rates tend to be more stable so the big opportunities come either with getting people to add to cart or getting people to view a product mm -hmm. you know, i i see a lot of the time if a company is not driving traffic directly to products then their product view rate could be as low as 20 to 30 percent so that's 20 to 30% of their website visitors are actually seeing one of their product pages. But there's a big opportunity mm -hmm. there. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing I would do. I'd be looking at that. And I'd also be looking at um, you know, some device and some browser reports 
just to see where things might be broken. So I know that um, if, a lot of people seem to have this impression that CRO is A-B testing. Um, A-B testing is part of what we do, but the general idea of CRO is to, is to put a, a process in place for business growth. Mm -hmm. Right. So nice. uh, that's why, you know, performance models in CRO don't work because they tend to be based on, on testing and things. But if I, if I go into Google analytics and I see that your, um, that Chrome in windows doesn't work, for example, I'm not mm -hmm. going to sit there and go, well, like, I'm not going to test that because it's not my responsibility. I'm going to be saying, well, you know, we've got a big opportunity to here to improve conversion because the, the Chrome browser is not working. Um, so those are kind of, that's more of a quick fix thing, right? You can open up, open up Chrome, open up Safari, have a look at them both and, and see what's different. And you can do it the same with different mobile devices. You, you pull them up together, uh, compare the user experience, and you might just find that a button doesn't work or you've got a certain pop out, um, you know, like a, a live chat button, which is actually sitting on top of your add to cart button on, on a certain device. So you can just quickly fix those. Uh, and you'll see a bit of improvement. But then going back to the the kind of uh, the purchase journey and enhanced e-commerce, once you've identified that section, so let's say it's add to cart, right? That means you've got a problem on your product pages, right? Your products are not selling properly. So then I would look at things like, um, I normally just use Hotjar for this, but uh, heat maps and session recordings on those pages to see how people interact with those pages, where they're clicking, where they're not clicking, um, where they're, you know, where if, if they're on a desktop browser, where their mouse is moving, and that's uh, that kind of um, behavior they show on the page, uh, and then on-site surveys as well to get that feedback from people. It could be exit intent, you know, what is the number one reason you haven't made a purchase today, or it could be uh, just what is one piece of information you'd like to see on this page. Mm -hmm. Just letting those run for a while, getting that feedback, uh, and then the final part of it is running customer interviews. So actually getting a few people, you know, maybe about 10 uh, on a video call and just ask them questions, right? But you're not asking them what they liked about your website. Mm -hmm. You're asking them about why they decided to purchase these products, right? What was going on in their life at the time? What was it that made them go, right, today's the day I've got to buy this product. And the insight you can get from that is fantastic. I actually, I, I did one earlier today uh, for CBD products. And just some of the things she was saying, this woman was saying was, was just, was just amazing because it wasn't just the kind of the theme of the, of the opportunity that was there. So in one case it was taste, right? The taste of the products. There's only so much I can do with knowing that taste is something that people care about. I need to hear from a customer how they describe what that taste is and what it means to them, because then that's the language I can use on the website to convince other people. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, so that's, that's kind of the route I would take with it. I would, you know, start with Google analytics to, to identify an area to improve, use those, use those heat maps, session recordings, uh, to identify a bit more on, you know, what's actually going wrong on these pages, where are people missing things? And then those customer interviews to find out, you know, what people really think about the products, the language they use, uh, and then that will help you you know, once you've identified where the problem is, the customer interviews will help you actually fix those problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Valuable. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, finding the balance between SEO and uh, content rate optimization. Uh, I can explain why I want to touch this topic. For example, SEO specialists often want to get more text, you know, because uh, 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 it helps to uh, satisfy some user intent and Google ranks these websites higher. But when I check out websites like Apple or, or many others, I don't see a lot of text, just uh, simple uh, phrases like uh, make a difference and something like this. So how to find this balance between uh, writing a lot and content rate optimization. For example, we can overwrite to get more traffic, but we can lose uh, attention with uh, uh, convert, uh, conversions. Yeah. Uh, but if we write less, we can uh, satisfy some users who uh, can understand what uh, to buy, how to do it, uh, but we can't get traffic from Google. What do you think about that? Yeah, so I mean, I, I'm not an SEO expert. Um, by any means. So mm -hmm. I want to be careful what I say about SEO. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, my, my SEO knowledge is probably 10 years out of date now. 
Mm-hmm. Um, what I would say is there needs to be good collaboration between the teams, mm-hmm. right? As a as a as a as a CRO, I want to be moving things on that page. I want to be you know. Uh, not necessarily removing content, but moving it, right? Does this particular mm-hmm. phrase or sentence work better uh, above the fold by the product name or does it need to be further down the page? Mm-hmm. Um, it would be rare. I think it'd be rare that a CRO would be saying we need to get rid of this copy. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I, I I do it on certain pages. Um, you know, not a product listing page where you'll have you know multiple products listed and you very often get that paragraph of text at the top, which kind of describes mm-hmm. the category you're looking at. Now, I hate that because no one reads it. People people skip over it straight away. So it's literally pushing the important stuff down the page. Mm-hmm. Now, so my kind of solution to that would be, well, can that be at the bottom of the page? In order to satisfy mm-hmm. SEO, can we just move its position on the page? Mm-hmm. Right, nice, not nice. get rid of it, fine. Um, so yeah, I, I think it, it it's just communicating, working together, and that's what a lot of, all, all teams should be doing. Really, you know, you should be doing it. You know, SEO teams and PPC teams should be working together. They shouldn't be these separate teams just doing their own thing. There should be feedback moving between the teams, um, and the same with, with CRO. Because when I do those customer interviews, right, I'm going to find that language, and that language might be what what an SEO person then needs to start using on the website. Or, mm-hmm. or at least investigating. You know, when this person tells me um, these CBD products are, are really refreshing, you know, it's a really refreshing taste. Is that information that the SEO team can be using? Because is that pe- what people are searching for? You know, in one of the reviews I read for this company said um, they tried multiple products before and always found them really bitter, but this product was really refreshing and minty. So, if that's a major concern that lots of people out there have, you know, if, if people are searching why are CBD products bitter or um, what flavors of CBD products, you know, there's opportunity out there based on that feedback. And, and that's mm-hmm. what I can be providing to an SEO team uh, mm-hmm. so that they, they can, you know, prepare the copy and the content for the pages in a way which also meets my goals uh, to convert people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, of course. And you know, uh, I think today uh, SEO is more related with UX, uh, more than SEO foundation that you need to optimize your website to get backlinks. Uh, but if you can satisfy user intent, so if you can help them, uh, you can get high results. So uh, <laughs> it's better to pay attention to what uh, you are saying about that. Okay, uh, I'm interested more about uh, landing page uh, where we are going, for example, uh, to sell products. Can you tell uh, which elements uh, are important today? Where we need to pay more attention? Uh, for example, if someone opens a landing page and can find the right information, uh, yeah, they can leave and uh, forget uh, forever about this website. And I found that uh, simplicity plays uh, yeah, a huge role, you know, uh, when we optimize uh, some landing pages. Um, can you tell from your experience how to simplify content? Uh, where we need to pay more attention? Because, for example, I often check out websites that submit a lot of products in one page. They want to sell uh, all their catalog, but, you know, the customers hate it. They, they don't want to waste time. Tell more about that. Yeah, so um, obviously landing pages should, should have a single focus. Right, mm-hmm. it should be one one objective for that page, which is to sell that one product, or get people to sign up for something, or uh, submit a lead form. You know, whatever. The one focus. Um, then, as far as simplicity goes, I think it's about it's about making sure that everything on the page is valuable. But that page can be as long as as you want it to be. Right, mm-hmm. it can be as much copy as you want, as many images as you want, graphics, whatever, video, as long as it all is all valuable and it all contributes to selling that product. Right, if you can cut out words that that don't add anything, then cut them out because then they are just adding clutter. Um, but otherwise, those landing pages can be. I mean, you know, you, you sit a lot in um, a lot more in the B two B side. To be fair, you know, you'll get pages which are you know, maybe a couple of thousand words dedicated to why this course is so amazing or why this this SaaS tool is so amazing. You don't see it so much in B2C. 
um, B2C, there's, there seems to be this idea that people want a few bullet points about the product and that's mm -hmm. it. Um, but it, it's it's not the case. People will read an entire product page. Well, sorry, some people will read an entire product page. Right? I, mm -hmm. I'm not one of them. I, I'm a skimmer. You know, I will always mm -hmm. just um, scan a page for some key bits of information. If I'm happy, then I'll either, I'm, I'm either making the purchase or I'm leaving. But you will get people who, you know, they might read a bullet point that you've got at the top of the page and want to know more about that. You know, um, mm -hmm. going back to the CBD example, just because it is top of mind at the moment. Um, my client says that the, the reason they have uh, the amount of CBD in their product is because it's uh, scientifically, it's the right amount. It's the perfect kind of perfect amount um, that you should be taking. So if I, if I read that, you know, I'm the sort of person who would say, cool, that's fine with me. That's what, that's what you're telling me. Um, based on what I kind of know, that sounds all right. So I'm just going to buy it. But you'll get other people who look at that and go, well, why? What is the science? Why Why mm -hmm. is this the perfect amount? What does, it, what does that mean? Um, you know, and they want more information. So if you don't have that information there, you lose all those people. But by but if you don't have those information, that information, sorry, if you do have that information there, you don't lose me, the skimmer. You know, I've got what I need. Mm -hmm. I can move on. I, I, I don't have to read an entire page of content, um, but you lose all those people who did want to read it. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, love it. Uh, okay, uh, can you tell more about personalization? Uh, you know, uh, today I often hear this word that we need to personalize experience and especially about landing pages. Uh, but uh, when uh, some companies have uh, broad audience, for example, female, male, uh, different ages, uh, Gen Z, Millennium, uh, other uh, groups, uh, how to personalize this experience? Uh, how do we know that it's personalized uh, for our customers? Because, uh, for example, when I check out competitors, I, I can see uh, I don't know, like friendly style or uh, some uh, simple content, but uh, I don't know if it's personalized or not. Probably their audience or customers uh, can understand uh, this content. But uh, how to consider our unique selling proposition to personalize content with our audience? What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think it's really important. And I think, you know, the easiest way to do it is landing pages. Mm -hmm. right? I, think, I think you can get into... You can you can overcomplicate things by trying to automate everything and make it dynamic, and you know say well if it's if if the person enters via this URL with this UTM parameter, display this bit of content here, that bit of content there. But obviously, the more complex you make it, the easier it is to mess it up, and for mm -hmm. something to go wrong, or for someone else in the business to change something, which then just breaks all that and messes it mm -hmm. up. Or, or someone mm -hmm. someone has put in slight the you know slightly incorrect UTM parameter. Um, so I would keep things a bit broader, and and just have some landing pages that cover certain topics. So um, I used to work with a pillow company, which um, you know, it was an orthopedic pillow so to help with neck pain. And you know one of the things we could have done is we could have done a landing page for golfers for rugby players, for tennis players, for, for football players, right? Because we, we got this understanding that um, people playing sports uh, needed to recover. Um, mm -hmm. They wanted pillows that would help them recover. A lot of these sports do cause tension on the neck. So yeah, one option would have been to go down the route of, of designing a page for every single, uh, every single sport out there really. But really all you needed to do was one page about sports recovery. Mm -hmm. that's generally enough for people um so i think you need to be personalized to a degree um mm -hmm. especially for new customers but um i wouldn't overdo it mm -hmm. I, 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 I yeah wouldn't worry about trying to overdo it um but, uh, because it will yeah. take it all takes time as well and if it doesn't work you've just wasted mm -hmm. a load of time on a landing page so Nice, nice. Uh, okay. Uh, do you have some specific checklist? For example, if you take a new website, uh, an online shop, uh, homepage, uh, catalog, uh, product page, uh, other pages, 
uh, where uh, webmasters need to start with convert rate optimization? Uh, uh, provide from your experience uh, what to do first, second, third, and all steps. Um, so again, it kind of comes comes back to what I mentioned at the start about the analytics and identifying mm -hmm. which pages are are the issues. Mm -hmm. um, if if loads of people are seeing products, then you might not have an issue there. So catalog pages might be fine. Um, your search might be fine. Mm -hmm. um, so you're looking at you're looking at a product page, right? You know how how do we get people to add to cart? So I'd say that's the first thing to look for is where is the big drop off, and where's the opportunity going to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it comes down to, I'd say a little bit of, uh, of, of, I was going to say best practice, which I, I, I don't say because mm -hmm. best practice is bad, uh, experience, right? A bit mm -hmm. of experience looking over a website and saying, I think there's an opportunity here, right? And, mm -hmm. th and that's all it is. It's never, you know, at this stage, it can never be, this is wrong. It should be like this mm -hmm. because I, there's no way of me knowing that all I'm doing is basing that off previous experience. And I don't know if previous experience is going to be right for this, for this new client. So it's always, I think there's an opportunity here. Um, and that could be products, images, you know, if, if you've got very stock, stock like photos, um, there's always an opportunity there. You know, people like real life photos. They like to see, you know, an image of someone wearing clothing or wearing shoes mm -hmm. or even even using um uh, certain you know cbd products or, or eating foods you know you want to see people happy people enjoying those products you want to see how they fit that sort of thing so products are really important um and then i'd there's a lot to do with cop, uh, copy right mm -hmm. um not just copy about the product but also um copy about the business right and uh and the service you're providing so a big mistake I see a lot is people tuck free shipping and free delivery, uh, sorry, free shipping and free returns. They tuck them away uh, somewhere on the page, or I think you've probably noticed it on a lot of product pages now, you, you get tabs. So it'd be like product description tab, shipping, warranty, reviews, something like that. The mistake mm -hmm. there is you're asking for, you're asking the customer to find these tabs and click each one to find that information. What works far better is if you stick a big, bold sign near your call to action saying free returns on this product. Because then people mm -hmm. don't have to search anywhere. Um, you capture both the scanners and the uh, the kind of deeper researchers. Um, and you're, yeah, you're more likely to convert them. So <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't stop them. They want to upload you <laughs> for okay. all this information. <laughs> um, yeah. What else? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult to say. You know, I, I I can audit a website and I can look at I can look at the analytics and I can look over the website myself, and I can identify areas for improvement. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, like I can I can never really say to someone this is wrong. You need to you need to do it differently. Um, mm -hmm. there, there might be a few occasions, you know, if someone hasn't got a guest checkout, for example, I will probably say to them, "You need a guest checkout." We don't really need mm -hmm. to test that. Offer a guest checkout; they're, they're better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, most of the time, it's uh, you know, you know, for example, if if we see that there's an add to cart problem, I can I can look at the page, I can look at product pages. And I can come up with some theories on why, on why there might be improvement. Um, but really, it's going to be those customer interviews that tell me what to do, mm -hmm. because they're the they're the people who are going to tell me why they bought in the first place, what concerns they had, and then I can match that feedback up to the website and say, well, we've got that message, we've got that message, we haven't got this one. So mm -hmm. do we need to test putting that that message on the website? And that's not something that I can just have on a checklist. Um, because it's mm -hmm. going to be different for for every business. Um, nice. But uh, uh, you know, essentially, groupings come down to uh, usability. So, is the website easy to use? You know, is it easy to navigate? Um, does it help me find what I'm looking for? So, when you know, in terms of like a checklist or an audit, 
I, I can play around with a website from a usability point of view and say, you know, was it easy to find what I wanted? Um, is it easy to pay? Uh, if I decide I don't want a product and I'm on the product page, how easily can I find an alternative? Um, then I'm looking at anxiety. So I'm generally looking at a product page and I'm thinking, do, you know, a lot of the time I don't have experience with these products, right? So I'm looking at these products thinking, if I wanted to buy these, what questions would I have? Mm -hmm. And is this page answering those questions? Mm -hmm. And if not, then, you know, there's opportunities there. But again, it comes down to them speaking to customers to find out what those questions really are uh, and what their answers to those questions would be. Um, and then the final point is motivation, which is how excited do we making customers about these products? Do the products give the impression that they are uh, really fun, really exciting, really good for you? Um, do, you know, do you get the impression that you are going to achieve what you want to achieve by buying this product? Mm -hmm. right, so I don't know, could be clothing. You want it to look great. Does the, mm -hmm. you know, do they have great looking models on there? Um, if it's food related, it could be, you know, do I think this, uh, this product's going to meet my diet requirements or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, or, you know, it could be, um, you know, you get a lot of meal prep businesses. So you could be saying, you know, do I think this is going to make me lean? <laughs> right. And, and it's mm -hmm. going to be good for the gym, that sort of thing. So, you, you know, you want the imagery in the copy that are going to make people think I'm going to miss out if I don't buy this product. You know, I, I want to be yeah. better. I don't want to be, you know, if I don't buy this product, I'm going to stay where I am. Whereas if I buy the mm -hmm. product, I'm going to, I'm going to level up. That's, that's mm -hmm. the kind of feeling you want to give people. And mm -hmm. yeah, um, I, I can do a little bit of, I don't think there's enough of that there. Um, but when you, you, you start to re read reviews, uh, review the website yourself, review some customer feedback, speak to some customers, you start to work out what those messages are that are going to, you know, deal with their anxieties and answer their questions and also uh, make them excited and make them really want these products. Nice, nice. Um, um, you know, I, I remember uh, the presentation from Apple when Tim Cook uh, uh, showed about new Apple Watch. Yeah, I, I have them. And, you know, uh, that was interesting that he didn't try to sell Apple Watch. He uh, shared three stories about uh, how this uh, watch can help uh, different people. Uh, one of them uh, was, uh, uh, I don't remember exactly, one of them was sportsman, uh, others just a common human being, you know, uh, and uh, he shared three stories uh, that um, uh, one man uh, uh, knew about uh, her disease because of Apple Watch. Uh, sportsman can uh, okay. measure all results about uh, uh, swimming um, in pool. Uh, and yeah, uh, and uh, all three examples were great to uh, provide a strong reason to buy this Apple Watch. Can you tell yeah. more about storytelling? You know, how we can add storytelling style to landing page to increase conversion rate or we need to create separate pages, you know, because uh, I think today people don't buy products, they buy stories. So can you tell more about that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. They they don't buy products. They buy, uh, I wouldn't say they buy stories necessarily. They buy experiences. Mm -hmm. They buy results, okay. right? They, they buy, they're buying what they want to achieve. And if an Apple Watch is what helps them achieve that, then they buy an Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. um, if someone came out with another product and said, uh, th this is going to do, you know, you can measure all your, all your athletic, uh, uh stats or whatever. And, and we're half the price and we do, uh, a exact same or a better job. And here's, uh, Will, he's an athlete. Um, this is how it works for him when he does track running, then mm -hmm. obviously you're going to, you're going to switch, right? You're going to buy the, the cheaper product because it's, uh, it does exactly what you need it to do. And it's half the mm -hmm. price. You, know, you might you'll get some people who still buy Apple because it's Apple, um, mm -hmm. but but people want the result. Um, and I think there's something you can do with a lot of products, and and it's a great way of differentiating, right? I remember saying someone um, said to someone the other day, your your product doesn't have to be unique. You just have to explain it in a way which makes it unique. Mm -hmm. nice. So. 
that could be storytelling because loads of people don't do storytelling. So if you can use a story to explain why your product is so good and how it benefits people, you're, you're going to be better off. Um, but mm -hmm. also it can come down to features as well. Um, you know, if, uh, this particular product was a, a, a high chair for babies. And I just happened to notice that in the diagram for it uh, on the product page, it says some like scuff proof um, feet. Right. So it's it's not going to cause marks on the floor of it if it gets kind of shifted around a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if you're the only product that is saying that, then that makes you unique. Because as far as the customer is aware, you're the only product that does that, even though everyone else might do it. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a, there's a bit of storytelling and there's a bit of um, explaining the benefits. Right. You know, it, mm -hmm. it can be difficult. You know, it can be difficult to tell stories for products. Um, you know, not everyone's got access to a fantastic copywriter who can uh, do that research yeah. and come up with the examples and things. Um, but good ways to really focus on explaining the benefits, um, the, the ultimate benefits of what of what people are buying from you. Um, yeah, that's what going to do. You know, people people buy the benefits. Um, it's very, I think it's very very rare that they buy the features. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably a handful of examples. You know, I'm, I'm buying, I'm having my kitchen redone, and I'm buying some flooring because I need to have the floor done at the same time. I suppose, arguably that flooring is a feature led purchase because I care about what it looks like. And, and that's probably it, but yeah, the majority of stuff, um, you're mm -hmm. buying it for the, for the benefit, right? You know, so I'm, I'm on a, uh, I don't know how big the screen is actually 24 inch monitor I've got in front of me. Um, I'm not buying it because it's a 24 inch monitor. I'm buying it because I can open up, I can have two browsers side by side on the same screen. Mm -hmm. And then I've also got the monitor to my side. Right? Yeah. So it's it's this space that it provides me to allow me to do the work. Mm -hmm. um, nice. Yeah. Okay. I have the question about uh, uh, trust. Uh, can you tell how to provoke the trust feeling? Uh, because um, I check out some studies that 95% of customers uh, need trust before buying products. Uh, so if they uh, don't feel this trust, they skip it. Can you tell how to provoke this feeling, for example, when uh, customers open your page and they need to give this trust? Yeah, so um, let's think. Probably about three things come to mind immediately. One is having a professional looking website um that looks you know looks like someone's maintaining it looks like it's it's getting mm -hmm. some love um it looks secure you know it looks um you know it's got uh, consistent design mm -hmm. right that that makes people feel a bit comfortable um second would be access to customer service right so if i can see i don't even have to contact them if i can see live chat an email address a phone number these are things that again make me feel a bit more comfortable with the brand. Make me think that you know if I have a problem or if I've got any questions, it's easy to get in touch with them, um, and they're going to help me out. Um, but obviously, most importantly, are, are product reviews. Oh, sorry, reviews generally, uh, and mm -hmm. that that's social proof. Um, one other thing I do mention, but obviously I can't influence it too much in CRO, is uh, social media following. So I'll just touch mm -hmm. on that very quickly. Um, vast majority of people go and check social media channels of a business that they don't know. So mm -hmm. if you've got, you know, a verified profile on Instagram, if you've got, it doesn't have to be huge following, maybe a few thousand, mm -hmm. but they can see that you're, you've, you're verified. If you've got a story on there, you know, people mm -hmm. see that story, they go, cool, they're active. Um, and if people can see, you know, engagement with your posts again, it's like, it's little checklist things that make people go, okay, cool. So if you're one of those businesses where you're thinking, I oh, know we're not, we're not, social media is not for us. Don't want to waste time on that channel. People, people check it, you know, give it a very quick scan just to see if, if you're legit, right? mm -hmm. because they expect legit businesses to have social media. Um, anyway, coming back to reviews though, um, you've got two forms of reviews. You've got product reviews and you've got service reviews. So service reviews being this business is amazing. Um, they ship my product really quickly. Uh, they answer my questions. And, you know, I had to return a product. It was really easy. That's a fantastic mm -hmm. review of, of the business. And that's what people like to see. 
And then the other types of product reviews, which is obviously, this is an amazing product. It solved this problem for me. Um, it fit really well. It tasted really nice, whatever. Um, but it's about the product itself. And you do need to, you've got to utilize both on the website. Um, a problem I see a lot is that a lot of companies will take their company reviews and stick them as a little banner on the homepage uh, or maybe in the footer somewhere there. And that's it. That's the only place you find it. But customers want that information because when they're, when they've looked at a product, right, they've, they've looked at the images, they've read the copy and gone, this is really interesting. Um, they read some product reviews and go, okay, this product is really good. What about the company, right? What if I need to return the product? Mm -hmm. And that's where you need mm -hmm. those company reviews so that you've got your free, free returns tag on the page. You've got your, your email obvious or live chat. I just want to quickly check a review and see that someone's saying uh, reviews, uh, sorry, returns are not a problem. This company mm -hmm. deals with them really quickly. All right. That's like almost my final, my final checklist point before buying. You know, I want to be convinced mm -hmm. that the product is right for me. And then I want to be convinced that the business is the right one to buy from. Nice. Right? So nice. So you've got to have that, that trust in the product and trust in the business. And if you can get mm -hmm. both of those, right, you'll get the purchase. Um, if you get either of them wrong, you, you know, you're going to struggle. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to share a few other findings from other studies that, yeah, you are right. 75% uh, of customers open social media profiles. You know, they check out, uh, uh, probably they are looking for discounts or just want to get more trust. So, <laughs> and you know, yeah. uh, I found a few websites online, uh, that, uh, have social media accounts but when i check out the social media accounts the last post was 2019 or uh, even worse so uh, they have these accounts without uh, active um, without actions without posting content without uh, helping and supporting others without communicating with customers so uh, it's better to take them away if you have no time to be everywhere on all social media just choose one two social media but be active help others and yeah uh, repurpose content if you uh, have no yeah. time and yeah i agree completely with that okay i have the question for example if someone wanna be an expert like you uh, can you tell what to learn where we need to jump you know to get all these skills knowledge and yeah uh, to earn money on this field um learn copywriting mm -hmm. copyright is uh, because learning copywriting you're not just learning literally how to write you're learning mm -hmm. uh, how to understand customers as well um, mm -hmm. because that's that's what copywriting is all about so if you just did research into copywriting uh, you it would give you a great start in uh in in the CRO world as well um mm -hmm. obviously you've got to be quite analytical um i think a, a really really important um skill is b being able to really understand what someone means Right, so that listening, I can't, what's it called? Um, uh, it's a certain type of listening. You've got like three three types of listening and it's got to be the deepest one. I cannot remember the name of it, but it's basically not only listening to you and hearing you, it's really understanding what you mean by what you've said. And that could just be the phrasing of what you've said. And mm -hmm. it can be difficult when it's written which is why um, interviews are really, really good because, um, you know, I always use the example with me, right? Um, I'm really bad at saying it's all right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all right can mean anything from I hate this to I'm having a really good time, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's one of the uh, really bad thing I do. Um, so uh, the example actually came up at work once uh, we're having a beer and we had um, some colleagues over from uh, from another country and they just asked me what the beer's like. And I was like, yeah, it's all right. Um, mm -hmm. And the way I say it is kind of like, yeah, it's all right. Um, like I would I would recommend it. <laughs> right. But if I went, <laughs> yeah, it's all right. You know, and kind of like, mm, it's all right. That's obviously not a very good <laughs> inflection. So. Mm -hmm. That's that's why the interviews are really really important because yeah you, you can you can actually hear what someone says and you can see how they say it and you're really going to mm -hmm. get the best feedback so that's that's a really really important thing 
Um, and you, you can do it with written language as well. You know, I've, I've gone through thousands of bits of customer feedback um, and, and email, you know, customer service emails and things. Uh, but you have to take into account the whole context of what they've said and and kind of break it down a bit and you, and really understand what someone's saying. And mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, pricing is always a, a good example. People will say it's too expensive. Um, in fact, this this kind of came up today, actually, in the call. Uh, the, the woman said the product was really expensive, but she understands that it's um, it's a high quality product and you get more of it in the bottle than than uh, than competitors. So that got me thinking, well, actually, potentially this product's not that expensive. It could be basically the same price as the competitors, but it's just a bigger version of the product. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. You know, maybe that does make it too expensive as a mm-hmm. as an individual purchase. Maybe they need a smaller one, um, but it doesn't mean that the. But you know, the way a lot of people would take that is this product is too expensive. I'm not going to buy it. Mm-hmm. When actually nice. they're saying, you know, I might appreciate if there were two options, you know, a half size mm-hmm. and a and a full size bottle, for example. Um, yeah, you've yeah. you've really got to sit back and, and think about things. Um, one bit of advice that I, I picked up recently a couple of months ago was whenever you have an idea about something, uh, a test or a bit of copy or whatever, write down that idea and your solution to that idea and then come up with two more solutions to that to that problem. And then the, it, it's highly likely that the third solution is going to be the best option mm-hmm. because you will, you're yeah. forcing yourself to kind of iterate on that problem, to really think it through. Um, and if you force yourself to come up with three ideas, then you know you're forcing yourself to think more creatively, um, come up with you know multiple solutions, and then it might mean that you're one of the the second or third solution means you actually say, well, actually that first solution could be different as well, mm-hmm. um, and allows you to kind of iterate without without even having to run tests. Nice. I am. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's probably. Yeah, I agree with you. You know. Uh, you know, it's interesting about copywriting. I just want to add something from me, uh, my side. Uh, you know, uh, guys, uh, if you want to uh, read uh, a lot of books about copywriting, take a lot of courses about copywriting, uh, and without actions, you will never be awesome copywriter. You know, <laughs> yeah, book offers, yeah. they write every single day, plus thousand var- words a day. And uh, it's the same like, I don't know, to uh, read a book, how to play soccer. You know, if you don't play soccer, uh, books can help you. You know, yeah, they can lead you, show something interesting, but you need to play. Uh, it's the same with copywriting. If you want to be a great copywriter, you need to write, write, write every single day. Uh, more you write it, uh, more experience and uh, higher results. So, yeah, it's more about action. So, funny enough, I've got, there's there's two things that I think I'd be really good at. Mm-hmm. But I've got no experience in at all, so I've really no idea. One mm-hmm. is snowboarding, right? So mm-hmm. I've I've never skied, I've never snowboarded. My gut feeling, based on what I've seen, based on what I've read, snowboarding would be the one for me. I, I kind of understand mm-hmm. it. I think feel like I understand the movements and stuff. Uh, and the second mm-hmm. one is flying a helicopter, right? Mm-hmm. I've read about it. I've I've played a lot of video games. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I I get how helicopters fly, but you know. I don't know anything until I actually get in one and, and have those first lessons uh, and, yeah. and try and really figure it out. You know, and, until then, you know, can you, you know, you can't be that sort of person. I know it's hypothetical, but a, a zombie apocalypse and you're the one going, it's all right. I know how to fly a helicopter. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you've mm-hmm. got no experience, but you just, you've read books. It's not the mm-hmm. same. Yeah, I agree. Okay, uh, it's a big pleasure, Will, to have you on my show, to learn from you, to get all these valuable insights. Can uh, you tell our audience how they can reach out to you, learn more about you, follow you? Yeah, um, so I've got my my own podcast, Customers Who Click. As you can find it on iTunes, uh, Spotify, all the usual places. Um, and LinkedIn is the best place to mm-hmm. find me. Um, nice. I do have a website. Nice. It's okay. It's being, re- it's being worked on at the moment. <laughs> um, LinkedIn is definitely the best place to find me. Um, I'm always open to messages. Um, so just send me a connection request. 
Yeah, you use the same methods that I am using, you know, because I'm on LinkedIn active, you know, and yeah, uh, I love audio experience as well. So yeah, two places yeah. where I, I spent my, uh, so much time. Okay, thanks, Phil. Yeah, th thanks again. It's a big pleasure to get all uh, this information. Uh, guys, please follow, uh, connect with Phil, send him personalized messages. Uh, don't spam, just uh, personalized <laughs> messages <laughs> about uh, what you want to know more. Uh, find his links uh, in the description below. Listen us on Apple, Google, Spotify. And thanks again for watching and listening to us.